And I'm Trisha, and welcome to Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, About Soaps. Today we have another great show. We have a very, very special guest here with us. Today we're going to be interviewing Tom Beards, better known to you soap fans as Philip Chancellor III from The Young and the Restless's Genua City. Tom Beards also has written a book called Forgiving Troy. It's a true story of murder, mental illness, and recovery from the murder and the mental illness. He will talk to us at length about his book, Forgiving Troy. And ladies, let's not forget about hot topics and gossip. We'll talk about a lot of things that are spicy in the soap opera world. I was never going to be the man that you wanted me to be. I would never make you happy. I wasn't going to be the son or the heir that you wanted because Philip Chancellor III couldn't possibly be gay. Jim, there she was, practically cornering me. I tried to get rid of her. I told her I wasn't going to listen to anything she had to say. She just kept raising her voice, making this scene in front of everybody. Good night. I love you. I love you too. Hi, we're back again. And joining us by Skype, all the way from Lake Arrowhead, California, Tom Beards. Better known to the soap <laughs> fans, of course, as Philip Chancellor III from The Young and the Restless. How you doing today, Tom? Good. Good, but I'm so sorry I couldn't work out Skype. <laughs> That's okay, we got you now. We got you, right. we got you. Okay, so of course we want to talk to you about The Young and the Restless first. So you got to let us know about that. The soap fans want to know. Now how did you begin getting to acting? How did you start acting? Jeez, uh, when I was a little boy, that was my dream. I used to see actors on TV and I thought, oh, this is what I want to be. So I kind of kept that, that to myself because I was not an extrovert, but I saved money. And when I was 21, I moved to Hollywood with wow. 5,000 bucks. Wow. And uh, I got Rob Lowe's manager within like a couple of months. Wow. And he really believed in me. And I went on a lot of auditions. And uh, finally I got Young and the Restless within three years. Wow, wow, right? that's great. Yeah. And Tom, let me ask you, when you got The Young and the Restless, who was it that you did your screen test with? It was Brenda Dixon. Ah, oh, wow. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how was the chemistry? It, it clicked right away? Chemistry between you and her. Was it uh, good? Well, geez, I mean, it was, it was an emotional scene. Okay. She, she was in a hospital bed, so there was so much stuff going on in my head anyway because I really had to work up the emotion okay. for for my acting and then there was all these cameras and people around <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have much time to bond it was in and out but I felt I must have done good enough to get the job Wow know? okay uh, Tom can, can you speak a little bit about uh, the life of a soap star day-to-day life of a soap store star what's it what was it like to or what is it like to have to learn lines every day and to put all that emotion out on a day-to-day -day basis well you know what i'm hardly the person you should ask for that because if anybody is the antithesis of a soap star it's really me really? i mean as you can tell i live in lake arrowhead and i really paint pictures more than i act wow. and i love that Wow. But uh, w when you when you have to do uh, so many pages a day, you just get used to memorizing. Okay. And for me, what I do is I, I say the first two lines, I say them like 20 times, and then when I get that done, then I do like the three lines and four lines. So that's how I used to do it. Oh, okay. But I guess okay. everybody's got their own 
methods. Yeah, all methods, right. Yeah. Now, Tom, you have done soap acting as well as like prime time acting. You've did, done some stuff in Matlock, in Melrose Place. Which would you say is harder? Uh, geez. Well, you know, I think that nighttime is harder just wow. because you're waiting so long. Mm. Uh, things are quicker in daytime, and that's why most actors say that that's more difficult. But you really have plenty of time to do it anyway. But when you're doing a nighttime episodic, you know, you're sitting there, you're just waiting for hours and hours for them to call you. Really? Wow. Yeah. Now, uh, Tom, uh, we have to go back to your character, uh, Philip. Chancellor right. the Third. You know, the soap fans, uh, they love you, and we have to go back some 20 years to when you came when you came on to the show. There was the love triangle, mm -hmm. you know, for those uh, viewers who uh, didn't watch it. It was a love triangle between uh, Nina and Cricket. Cricket, yeah. And Nina, help me out here so I can set the record straight and please join in. Mm -hmm. Now, Nina loved you. Philip, Philip loved Cricket, and Cricket loved someone else. Danny Romilotti. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> so, okay. yeah, in fact, Nina got me drunk, and she jumped in bed with me, and she got pregnant. So that wow. storyline was about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ended up marrying her, falling in love with her. And then wow. Cricket went, went on to, I don't know, Cricket had so many romances. Uh, I think it was with Danny at that point. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So how was it working with the leading ladies, Cricket? You know what? She's adorable. The thing is, I was a 20, I was a 24 year old closeted gay man from Wisconsin, mm -hmm. middle, lower class. And Lori Bell is the daughter of the producer. She's a very wealthy teenager. Okay. So I didn't know how we would get along or how she would react to me. You know, I was kind of afraid to come out to her. And uh, so I, I was very hesitant about a lot of things back then. But I can tell you that she is one of the sweetest people that anybody will ever meet. She's wow. absolutely down to earth. Wow. She's got no attitude. And, you know, I mean, she's probably the only billionaire I know, but <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know it. Yeah. You wouldn't know it. Okay. okay. There, okay. Were, there were parts in the book where you mentioned, like, having some fun with her, and we'll talk about the book later, but, like, were there other, like, other actors or actresses on the set that you had, like, a, a, a good relationship with? Yeah. What about Nina? Mm hmm Jeannie's great, and Jeannie's so different than you think, because she plays Mrs. Chancellor, so she plays this you know, extremely wealthy, uh, <laughs> refined woman. And she's not refined at all. You know, <laughs> she's got a lot of fun. And she will, she will get the whole crew laughing. She will say stuff that's uh, just very, very funny, and you wouldn't expect her to say it. She's a very wonderful woman, and I feel so lucky that, you know, that I know her and that I have a relationship with her because she's such an icon. Wow. You know, people will write me on Facebook and they'll say, how's Jeannie Cooper? She's my favorite. And, you know, she's like 82 years old. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> How great is that? What staying power is that, yeah. you know? Okay, well, every time, this is a um, trend for us here. Let's talk about, so we got to ask you about the behind the scenes stories. I know you got some juicy stories. <laughs> Can you tell us behind the scenes? Yeah, yes. what happened behind the scenes? Come on, tell us something. <laughs> I don't think I have anything for you. No? Oh. Soap fans want to know. you got to have one. Uh, <laughs> behind the scenes. No, you know what? The Young and the Restless, there was only, well, there were two people with attitude 20-something years ago. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and neither of them have attitude anymore. And it's really a nice, nice crew, you know, that's totally respectful of, of each other. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't, what, what, kind of, what kind of church you want? I don't <laughs> well, let's come forward to when you, uh, when you came back uh, to Young and the Restless. At, it was a surprise to the cast from what 
uh, Tessa McKenzie, the producer of uh, Let's Talk About Soaps, was telling me, how did that come about? Were, uh, were you excited? You're coming back as a gay character. How did that, how did that feel for you uh, professionally to, to do that? Set it up for us. Describe it. The soap fans want to know all the details on how it was done. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, 20 years goes like that. I couldn't believe that I was off in 20 years. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. And then I was in talks with the producer and uh, a couple of the producers about coming back. And the only reason I would have come back is if I could play gay because, you know, I did it. You know, I did Philip Chancellor years ago. I'm a guy that gets kind of bored. I've been bored with so many of my boyfriends and I move on. I've been bored with so many of my jobs. You know, I'm not necessarily proud of that, but that's kind of who I am. So in order for me to go back all these years later, I really had to be excited about what I could do. When I felt, wow, you know, Young and the Restless hasn't really tackled the gay storyline. And it would be so cool for me to be able to present a real likable gay guy mm -hmm. to so many countries because Young Arrestus has seen so many places. Oh, so, you know, I was really excited, really excited to go back and do that. Um, now, Tom, what similarities do you see, if any, in, with your character, Philip, and yourself? We look alike. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> That's about it. I mean, I never... I never dress up. I'm really not a fancy guy. You know, I don't have the chancellor of money. And uh, I don't know. You know, I'm so independent. In fact, somebody was asking me a couple days ago if I liked, if I was fine with the, with the storyline when Young OS has brought me back. And I said what really bothered me about it was that if somebody's going to fake their death, mm -hmm. there's got to be a reason. So Philip must have heard there was homophobia there in yeah. order to think, well, I've got to fake my death. I've got to lie to the people I love. So that kind of bothered me that they just kind of brushed over that and they didn't, they didn't go into that. All so, right. you know, but then again, I'm just trying to answer your question because I guess I would feel a little different than Philip anyway. <laughs> Okay. So uh, I, I'm trying to understand. So you didn't understand the storyline that they wrote about faking you faking your death, like it wasn't clear. Well, all they did was that they just said, "Hey, you know, here's Philip. He faked his death, and everybody's fine with him being gay." And they didn't go into the they didn't go into uh. the idea that there was homophobia or there is homophobia. Sure, and I was sure. thinking, wouldn't it be cool? Yeah, because I think they, they wanted to just brush down. over that, well, so if, if they didn't upset people. And I was thinking, geez, it would have been cool if they would have made somebody very homophobic, like Victor Newman or somebody, you know, because likable people can be homophobic. True, but it true. would have just been interesting to play that out more than just saying, oh, okay, we're fine, we love you. Because right. that's pretty much all it was, and right. it wasn't as real as I would have liked it to have been. Right. Well, well uh, what should happen is that they should maybe bring you back and play it out. They could, yeah, they could do that, right. Where the, there would be characters why. that would have those feelings or have those uh, viewpoints right, and have late. you interact with them. Right, it's not too late. So that's I'm sure the soap fans want to see you come back, back yeah. which uh, brings me to the question, what, what were the fans' reactions when you came back? How did, how did that play out for you? Oh, everybody was surprised. Of course. Everybody was, was totally surprised. Uh, and they, uh, I knew about it months in advance, maybe five months in advance, and they told me, Tom, we're going to keep this a secret for May sweeps, so don't tell anybody. And it was so hard for me not to tell people because I thought, oh my God, this is going to be so cool. <laughs> so they kept it a secret. They kept it a very good secret. And the fans were shocked. You know, if somebody is dead for 20 years, you know. Wow. So you come back and you meet your son, your now grown son, Chance. And right. I remember reading um, excerpts of your book saying, like, you felt like your character was just like 
your real life, like your your father leaving and, and coming back. Can you explain a little bit of of that emotional part of coming back? I'm sorry. In relation to my son, I'm sorry. Well, like, you mean so you said you had left your son Chance and now came back, and Chance kind of like said that you. Oh, well, I'm talking as if it was real life, but mm -hmm. like Chance um, was kind of angry with you about leaving um, and thought it was irresponsible. Can you talk about how um, that related to a little bit of your of your life, like uh, as Tom Beards, not as Philip Chancellor? Well, that's another way that Philip and I don't have anything in common. <laughs> I've never been a father, nor have I ever wanted to be a father. Well, okay. It, okay. it would be so much responsibility. <laughs> I'm kind of a self-centered guy that does always has done what I wanted to do, and I love that, and I think that's the way I directed my life, and that's the way I can live. And, you know, I still admire parents, but my God, the amount of work it is to, to yeah. be a parent. Yeah, I can't yeah, imagine. I I can't imagine. I see my little dog here. <laughs> and that's a lot of work. I have half a dog. That's all my responsibility. Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, so Philip, in the storyline, Philip came back and he had a son that he had lied to about being dead as well. So, you know, that was a major storyline. And uh, he's a great guy, John Driscoll. Okay. Really cool. And, of course, Trisha Cass, Nina. You know that she always knocks it out of the park. Nina's amazing, <laughs> you know? How did your co-stars react when you came back? Uh, uh, great. It's like there it was, was no happy. time that passed at all, you know? These mm -hmm. people I had always thought highly of, and they always liked me. I would see them occasionally throughout the years, so uh, I think they were all happy, and I was happy to return. Wow. wow. Yeah. Now, I mean, how many jobs does anybody have where well, you can go back 20 years later? Right, yeah. exactly. Yes. And Tom, um, I remember you saying that during that 20 years, you were never a couple of miles away from the, st from the CBS studios. Right. Yeah, wow. so I would pass it all the time. Oh, wow. You know, I left it because I wanted to be a movie star. I wanted to be Rob Lowe or Tom Cruise. And <laughs> And I did, and when that didn't happen, sure, I mean, I had I had to go back to waiting tables, which wow. was not too far away from CVS. It was like a block wow. a block away. I was waiting tables at Canton, you know, and my co-stars would come in, and there was a time when I was also catering parties, and uh, wow. the soap stars would come in, and I was a bartender. I wasn't a star. Wow. So, you know, I've dealt with a lot of humility, but it's very amusing. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> we still love you. We want you to come back. It's yes, never too yes. late. We want you back. The so. fans love you. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a message for you from your fans. Um, I'm not sure if you have ever seen the um, Boycott ABC7 page on Facebook, but the two creators of that page they have actually sent in a message that they wanted me to read to you. So I'm going to go ahead and read that now. Okay. Dear Tom, we at our Soap Saving page, Boycott ABC7, are dedicated to keeping the soap opera genre alive. And the actors, cast, and crew on our TVs daily. We have daily tasks and thousands of team members working hard for all of our soaps. Both Yvonne and I, Denise Quinones, would like you, would like, sorry, would like to take this opportunity to thank you for everything that you have given to us in the soap community. I can vividly recall your love triangle with Christine and Nina <laughs> over 20 years ago wow. on The Young and the Restless and when you came back to YNR two decades later. We, the fans, welcomed you back with open arms. It is amazing to us how much of an impact you and all soap actors have on us. Boycott ABC7 
is working hard daily to bring back one life to live, all my children, keep General Hospital, Young and the Restless, Days of Our Lives, and Bold and the Beautiful on the air for many more decades. For these daytime dramas are instrumental in social awareness, enjoyment, and escape from our everyday problems. Tom, we thank you for all you have done and continue to do in the industry and your charities. We at Boycott ABC7 stand by you and all the actors from our soaps. Yvonne Fernandez and I, Denise Quinones, will never give up on daytime dramas and the actors. We love you, Tom. <laughs> now, Boycott ABC7 was a page that was brought up once ABC started to take the soaps off the air. Mm -hmm. And that was a message that the fans had to give to you. Mm -hmm. well, cool. Yes. Well, thanks. I mean, that means a great deal. Uh, I grew up watching soaps because my grandma watched soaps, my mom watched soaps. So, you know, they've always been a part of my life and a part of so many lives. It would be sad to see them go away, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. As a lot of them are. That's very sad. Now, Tom, what, what would you bring to your character? Uh, what issues um, would you uh, like to have your character to bring out? Like, you, you talked about how the your your mother and uh, the other characters really didn't express how they felt about the gay life. What possible storylines uh, could you see your character going through? Well, there's so many storylines I'd like to see, you know. They certainly haven't given Philip a romance, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and that's only fair. Uh, I've got one of my cousins who's a uh, only 10 years old and he's being bullied in school oh, wow. and it would be it would be nice to have a bullying storyline and I suggested to the head writer that wouldn't it be cool if uh, if uh, Chloe discovered that and Chloe and Philip you know were, were instrumental in that uh, I've, I've also suggested that uh, there's like Trisha like if Nina had a doctor for something and maybe the doctor was gay, and uh, I forget the details right now. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, there's so many things they could do. They've got a lot of characters. I True. don't know. True. I don't know. Some things, you, <laughs> you know, it's just out of my control. It has been changed now. They have written that in some soaps. All my children had it in their soap. Erica's daughter was um, a lesbian. So they had, now they're more open. Back then, like 20 years ago, it wasn't so open. Now they are writing that in the scripts now. So it can be possible. It can be done. They're yeah, doing it now. They, it can be done. They are doing it, yeah. Yeah, it can be. So that brings me to the question. When you left and then you came out, what was the, you know, what was the repercussions, if any, that happened after? Repercussions of what? Leaving or coming out? Um, coming out of uh, of the of the closet after you left the soap opera. What were the repercussions of that? Uh, I I guess I don't know. You know, I don't think that I suffered any repercussions of that. Okay. Some people may not be able to be taken uh, seriously for straight roles, but I haven't really auditioned that much, so. I don't think that would be a factor. I oh. think it was a really good thing for me. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm not a good bullshitter. I'm not a good liar. I really <laughs> like to be honest. And uh, it was hurting me, you know? Uh, so I think that's the bottom line. It made me feel better about myself. Okay, okay. Wow. And Tom, do you have any advice for your soap fans that maybe are dealing with the problems and the issues of trying to come out and they have not been able to yet because they're afraid that they won't be accepted maybe do you have any advice for them yeah absolutely i mean the truth is 
people are are so much more accepted than they think and that's almost always the case yeah there's a couple of situations where they're really kicked out on the street but what are they losing then you know if, if their family hates you that much you're better off without them but it, it, you know from the people from the hundreds and hundreds of people that contact me they say that they're, they got much more support than they thought. And so I would like them to know that it's out there. There's so much more support than people think. Okay, and now I want to actually take a turn away from the soaps. Because something that maybe not all of your fans know is that you are a very accomplished artist. You do beautiful paintings, and I know personally that you actually even take contracts from some of your soap fans to paint some pictures for them. One thing I have read is that you paint in the nude. Is that true? <laughs> we want to know. We want to know. It's colder up here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when it warms up, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so does it help you paint better? Does it spark inspiration? Like, yeah. Yeah. Much better? Why? So how does it help you? <laughs> Uh, well, it doesn't. I, if you can be nude, uh, why not? <laughs> uh, okay. Luckily, we're on here, uh, and I guess I can show you through this. I don't know. But I have this amazing view where all you see are trees, and I don't really have any neighbors out here. Oh, so yeah. I can be naked outside. <laughs> And, and uh, I can be naked on the deck. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> be free. <laughs> now, your, your artwork is throughout your book, uh, Forgiving Troy. Uh, and you use it, I guess, as a way of describing some of the, some of the ch chapters. Now, when did you start uh, the art? Did you do it from young, or is it something that developed um, in adulthood? I've always painted. I remember painting East, Easter eggs. I think that was my first memory. I was three years old. Wow. But it's pictured because it was just so wonderful. So I've always painted, but I never really thought that that would be my career. It's just something that I always did. Huh. And uh, then, uh, and I did. A lot of the paintings that are in the book, Forgiving Troy, those are some of the heavier analytical pieces where I would really just purge. Uh, and what came out on canvas, I could see all of the stuff that I was thinking about or repressing. I could see my mother. I could see my brother who killed her. I could see my brother who killed himself. I could see my fears my paranoia, I could see everything in my paintings. And those are the special uh, expressionistic paintings that are in the book. But I've been making a living mainly doing pretty stuff because <laughs> there's arty art and then there's pretty art. And people are more likely to buy pretty art. So that's what I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of landscapes and a lot of pet portraits. And it's been great. I love doing it. I so love doing it. Okay. Yeah. So you transitioned from being a, an actor to a visual artist, and you mentioned you had you talk about Joe Argazi. Is that how you say his name? He was instrumental in you becoming a visual artist. To speak a little bit about his influence and Scarlett Johansson. The two yeah, of them. Joe Argazi uh, is my ex. But uh, we had a real high connection. You know, I remember telling my dad after I met him, it's like, oh, well, wow, this guy, he's just, uh, uh, he's like a really great guy. He really likes to help people. And I just love that part about Joe. Joe cares mostly about helping people. That's who he is. And he's one of my closest friends now. We're not together as a couple. But yeah, he was instrumental in getting my art to a lot of people. And uh, a Beverly Hills, uh, art gallery and rep, they uh, were very interested in me, and then uh, Joe helped me get some more publicity, and one of my first art shows was in 2004 for the Art of Elysium, which is a charity that helps kids in the hospital, 
and uh, Scarlett Johansson was the hostess for that. So she hosted my art show in 2004, and I remember being on the red carpet with Scarlett, and all these cameras are going off, and Scarlett was like 19 or 20, and as cool as she can be, and I'm this older guy, and I'm nervous, and I'm asking her, how do you do this? And it was just so comfortable for her. She just, just loved it. Wow. We gotta take a break, Tom. All right. So we'll be right back with Tom and more about his book, Forgiving right. Troy. Okay, when we come back. <laughs> 